Hey guys, it's Zoe and welcome to day nine of Couchmas. I have a special guest here with me today, Tyson. This is his spot and he's upset that I've taken it. So he will be behind me for most of the video, likely. Today I am going to be doing fantasy recommendations. I've done this once before on my channel and I figured it was time to do an updated one because it's been a few years. But before I get into the video, I just wanna say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. So this is a monthly book subscription service that's available in the US and the UK. Unfortunately, I am in Canada and I cannot receive this box, but I was so excited to partner with them because I love the idea of this service and most of my viewers are in the US and in the UK. So I just wanted to let you guys know about this if you haven't heard about it yet. Each month, the Book of the Month team goes through hundreds and hundreds of books and they hand select five picks for you each month so you can spend more time reading and less time researching and looking for a great new read. If you don't see a book that you're really interested in each month, you can skip that month for free and just wait until the next one. The best part is they have the best prices for new release hardcover fiction. Right now, you can get your first book for only $5 using the code JOLLY. If this service was available in Canada right now, I would have been the first one to pick up. Let me just use my dog as a, as a box rest for a second here. The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. He does not want to be my Vanna White right now, and that's very upsetting. <laughs> Bye, guys. So this is a super cute, fun holiday romance that follows Charlie Goodwin, a chef on one of those reality baking shows. So she gets hit in the head and cannot function. She loses her ability to taste and smell things, which is kind of important when you're a chef. So she is just thrown for a complete loop. Meanwhile, back in their hometown, Charlie's twin sister Cass is frantically running around trying to run their bakery while dealing with a breakup that just won't end. So it's only days until Christmas and Charlie and Cass are like, brilliant idea, let's do something we haven't done since we were children, let's swap places. And it seems like it's gonna be going well until beautiful, rugged firefighter Jake comes into the picture, as well as a gorgeous physician's assistant named Miguel, and that is liable to make this whole thing burst into flames and turn their perfect holiday swap idea into a complete disaster. This is exactly the kind of thing that I am in the mood for. I love holiday romances. I love this kind of vibe. Lately, I've been loving any sort of romance that has a bakery involved. I don't know why. Am I destined to be a baker one day? Maybe. But this sounds so, so cute, and this would have been my absolute first pick. For this month's box, there's also an add-on, which is the Anthropocene Review? I have no idea how to say that word. By John Green, which is a collection of essays based off of his podcast, talking about the current age of the world that we live in, which is this very difficult to say word. And he just basically reviews a bunch of things about the, the human experience in essay format. So if John Green's podcast and John Green's writing is something that you are interested in, again, you can pick this up for just $5 with the code JOLLY. Thank you again so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video, and let's get into these recommendations. So the way that I am doing this recommendations video is gonna be different from the last time I did it for two reasons. One, it's couch miss and I wanna be on the couch. And two, I cannot pick my favorite book to save my life. I can't even pick like a top 10 favorite, especially with fantasy, one of my favorite genres, I can't choose. So what I'm gonna be doing is going through each of my fantasy shelves, cause I separate by genre, and recommending you my favorite book on that shelf, which is gonna get very interesting because there are some shelves where there's not a standout favorite, and some shelves where I literally cannot choose. I'm gonna put a picture of each shelf here, and then you can see like all the books that I have on there, but I'm going to recommend my favorite from each shelf. So it's also kind of like a mini bookshelf tour at the same time. The big one's gonna be coming later this month, but for now, a mini bookshelf tour on top of fantasy recommendations. Also, excuse the horrible angle of some of these pictures. I was taking them on my phone and I'm really short. So on this first shelf, I went with the very first book, which is The Dragon's Path by Daniel Abraham. I read this in 2019. I think it was for the first time. Loved it, I need to finish the series. I don't know why I've been putting it off, but it was so, so good. Disclaimer, right from the beginning. There's mention of dragons, but there's no actual dragons in this book. I'm really hoping they come out later in the series, but for right now, there's no actual dragons. And that is a disappointment. This follows Marcus, Kithrin, and 
Geeter, possibly Getter. I never know. I might try the audiobooks next so I can figure out how to pronounce these things. So Marcus, our first guy here, he used to be a hero. Those days are way behind him. He does not want to live that life anymore because he knows that even the smallest war means somebody's dying and he doesn't want that on his conscience. Unfortunately, his small band of men get pressed into a war that they don't want, so he needs to take some unorthodox steps to ensure that it doesn't happen and that nobody gets hurt. And then we have Kithrin, possibly Sithrin, but I think it's Kithrin. She is the ward of a banking house, and she is entrusted with smuggling a nation's wealth across a war zone, which is just, that's a whole thing to be putting on a child. You know, maybe don't do that. She is fully versed in the secrets of the trade commerce, but unfortunately that doesn't protect her from, you know, things like swords. And then we have Geeter, maybe Getter. He is the sole heir to a powerful noble house. However, he's more interested in philosophy than swordplay and he just basically becomes a pawn in everyone else's games because he's such a poor excuse for a soldier and that's what they want in the heir to a noble house. However, no one can quite predict what he's going to become. And from what I remember, blown away. I was not expecting the path that he took. And within these three stories, there's a small spat between the free cities and the severed throne that starts spiraling out of control. Someone from the depths of history comes into play and they are trying to, you know, fan the flames, sweeping the, the entire world onto the dragon's path the path of war. I want the dragons to come, that's all I'm saying. I'm really excited to get into the rest of that series and I definitely recommend if you are into fantasy. Next up, this shelf I had a lot of trouble picking oh. from because first of all, A Song of Race and Ruin was gorgeous. Chef's Kiss, City of Brass, same thing. Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom, fantastic, but everybody recommends those. So I went with my number one pick for underrated books that I want everybody to read, The Demon King by Cinda Williams Chima. This series, so good, so, so good. Still haven't finished the last book and I wanna read the spinoff series. So this follows Han Alistair. He is a thief. That's really all he's got going on in his life right now. And he will do anything, literally anything, to create a decent living for himself, his mom, and his sister. The really unfortunate part though is the only thing he has of any actual value is something he can't sell. He's got these cuffs attached to his wrists that he's had his entire life. They've kind of grown with him. He doesn't know where they're from, what the purpose is, why he can't take the damn things off and sell them when he, that's all he really wants to do because he knows he can get a very good price for them. He's already living a very difficult life, but his life gets much, much more difficult when he takes an amulet from this guy named Micah, who is the son of the High Wizard. The High Wizard and his son Micah are very, very upset with Han for stealing this because it once belonged to the Demon King the wizard who basically almost destroyed the entire world a millennium ago, and they will stop at nothing to get it back from him. Meanwhile, while Han is stealing this amulet, Raisa Anna Mariana, the princess of the High Fells, is dealing with her own set of issues. She's turned 16, and now she's eligible for marriage, which is something that she absolutely does not want, and something that her mom, the queen, is pushing her into. She really just does not want to trade in her common sense for a prince with a big palace and a tiny little brain. Really, what she wants to do with her life is be like the legendary Hanalia, maybe Hanalea, Hanali, Hanali, not 100% sure. The legendary, legendary warrior who killed the demon king and basically saved the entire world. Her mom though, like really, really against that. And she's trying to push Raisa into a marriage with a suitor who is entirely unsuitable and pretty much goes against everything that their queendom stands for. Hi, Tetis. Is that comfy? All right, next shelf, and don't mind the loud noise that's gonna happen in the background. Kurt's boiling the water to make his coffee. He's been waiting so patiently for me to stop talking, but I said, just, just go for it. This next shelf, I gotta say, I really loved The Last Namsara and The Caged Queen. I'm pretty sure there's a third book. I'm not 100% sure, but those two, I really love them. But I absolutely had to go with Bum, 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 bum. The Never Tilting World by Rin Chupeko. This duology, so good. This world is split 
even one side is always daytime the other side always nighttime 17 years before the events of this book happened the two twin goddesses that ruled this world they had a huge fight they defied an ancient prophecy and it literally split their world in two one side always day one side always night and like if you think about it for even just half a second that does not seem sustainable and it really isn't because the world is falling apart and big shit's happening this world cannot last much longer like this to make matters worse there is a giant abyss that splits this world in half so they cannot cross over into the other side and everyone on the one side thinks everyone on the other side is dead and vice versa now each of the twin goddesses that split the world apart they have their own daughter and they've raised their daughters not really telling them about what happened before and why the world is the way it is mark the time and day i'm getting a divorce my husband is trying to blow the smell of coffee at me knowing that i hate the smell of freshly ground coffee this bitch i hate him Anyways, you're fantastic. I love you so much. So 17 long years have passed. The daughters of these goddesses are being summoned to this giant abyss by these spectral forces. So each of them makes their way from their own half of the world to the middle. And they are both desperate to heal their world in whatever way they can find. Beautifully written. <coughs> Noah agrees. That sigh, just, oh, beautiful. 10 out of 10. Next up is an entirely Cassandra Clare shelf. And can I pick a favorite one? No, I like them all. They're not my absolute favorite series, but I like them all. So we're just gonna move on. We're gonna be totally honest here. My favorite on the shelf is Gwen, the penguin that I got from the penguin teen ice cream social thing that happened at BookCon 2019. Next shelf, I gotta say, The Bells is one of the prettiest covers that I own, but another one of my everybody needs to read this and I don't hear anyone talking about this is The Queen of Blood by Sarah Beth Durst. So good. Nobody talks about it enough. I still haven't read the last book. I've had it for so long, but I need to. I need to finish this trilogy. I need to know how it ends. So this is set in a world where everything has a spirit the earth, the rocks, the trees, the water, everything has a spirit. And all of these spirits hate humans. They want them dead. That's their main goal in life is to kill all of these humans. The women in this world though are able to control these spirits. Not all women, but some are able to control them and some are really, really powerful. The most powerful of all is the queen. She is the only one able to control every single spirit in this world at the same time. And her one command for all of them is do no harm. They are not allowed to harm the humans. This queen's position is very precarious and her heirs are chosen through young women who attend this academy. They go through a bunch of trials and then they there's like a whole big ceremony. And our main character, Delena, is one of these women, one of these women training to be an heir to the queen. However, she knows that her becoming queen is a complete long shot because she's not the best with the magic, she's not the top of the class or anything, but she just really wants to work hard so she can right the wrongs that were done to her home village. Meanwhile, we have this disgraced ex-champion named Ven. Champions are people who help the heirs and the queen, they defend them, they like carry out their justice, and whatever. And Ven used to be one of the best, but he is entirely disgraced but now he's secretly trying to like quell these little uprisings from spirits that have been happening in little pockets everywhere. Eventually, Delena and Ven meet up and they go on a mission basically to find out where the source of these ro like rogue spirit attacks are coming from. And it's so good. The world building is just so perfect. I loved everything about it. I love that it's not like a chosen one type story and she's just, a girl who gets thrust into things kind of against her will. Next up, we have more texts from my best friend. This one was really difficult, I gotta say. Nothing actually really, really stood out, but I'm gonna be going with Ace of Notebooks Falling Shades by Amanda Foodie. I remember liking this a lot, but I don't remember much about it which is why like it was hard to actually pick this as like a standout favorite. I'm pretty sure there is 
a bisexual main character. So this follows, let's see, the city of sin where casino families reign, gangs infest the streets and secrets hide in every shadow. That almost turned into a dramatic reading and I don't have the energy to do that, but I will be doing dramatic readings again soon. I will be bringing those back 100%. So this follows N. She was raised as a proper young lady and no young lady would visit New Reigns, the city of sin. That's just a scandal waiting to happen. However, her mom goes missing and Anne needs to leave her finishing school and her reputation behind to follow her mother's trail to the city where no one survives uncorrupted. Sounds fantastic, sign me up. However, when she gets there, she's super frightened and super alone and she only has one lead, a name, Levi Glazier. Unfortunately, Levi is the complete opposite of the gentleman that she was expecting to find. He is a street lord and a con man. I did love Levi. He is also only one payment away from cleaning up a rapidly unraveling investment scam, so he doesn't have time to investigate a woman's dangerous double life that she was leading. Anne's offer of compensation could be the solution to every single one of his problems. Their elaborate search for clues leads them through glamorous casinos, illicit cabarets, and into the clutches of a ruthless, ruthless, wow, mafia Donna. And then Anne unearths an impossible secret about her past. Levi's enemies catch up to them because of course they do, ensnaring him in a vis, vis why is that word so hard for me right now? Vicious execution game where the players always lose. To save him, Anne will need to surrender herself to the city and she'll need to play. Really good. I remember this being really, really good. And I do need to reread this so I can finish off the series. Is it a duology? No, I think it's a trilogy, not a duel. I don't know. Anyways, next up, we have absolute standout. However, Malice by John Gwynn. 10 out of 10, loved it. But for this one, I have to, I have to. Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray. This restored my faith in YA fantasy. So good, so, 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 so good. My biggest issue with YA fantasy lately, for the past couple of years, has been like, there's little mention of the romance or the love interest in the synopsis, and there's like this sick ass plot, but then a third into it, the romance just takes over everything, and the plot gets thrown out of the window, and it's just like, I love him so much. I need to save the world, but I just want to kiss him. And I just love him so much. And it's like, bitch, save the world and then make out. There's a plot that you need to be sticking to. This one did not do that. And I love it so much. I'm so pleased. Like I love romance and fantasy, but when we're promised a plot and the plot doesn't really happen because the romance, I got a little upset. So this one follows Coffin, who is a beast keeper indentured to the night zoo. Life kind of really sucks for her, but it gets a lot worse when she unleashes like this power that's been brewing in her for years, like a deadly, dangerous power. This is also a world where magic used to be a thing before the rupture that split the sky, but magic isn't a thing anymore. So this power, she really shouldn't have. After this power gets unleashed, Coffee tries to flee the night zoo and we meet Akon, who is trying to stop her. He is an elite warrior training to be one of the sons of the six, which is like top, top tier warriors. However, as he's trying to chase her down and stop her, she saves him from the Shatani, a monster that has plagued Lakasa for nearly a century. After this encounter with the beast, Coffee and Akon, they strike up a tentative tenuous bargain. This bargain leads them into the greater jungle where they are trying to kill the Shatani as a solution to all of their problems. The greater jungle is like the one place in this world where magic still exists and it's terrifying. And they encounter like untold dangers. But the farther they get into this jungle, the less clear it is whether they are the hunters or the hunted. This was beautifully written. It was so, so good. I am waiting very impatiently for the sequel. Also, a gorgeous cover. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So, next up, we have an absolute standout, 100% instant favorite when I read this earlier this year, The Extraordinaries by TJ Klune. It's like a superhero type story, but it's a world where there are a few superheroes that are just going around trying to save the world, and our main character, Nick, is absolutely thirsting over the one superhero. Nick is high key in love with Shadowstar and writes a lot of fan fiction about him, which is kind of creepy when you're writing fan fiction about a real person, but that's a whole separate issue. My memory card was full there. Anyways, he has a chance encounter with Shadowstar and now Nick is no longer content just sitting on the sidelines writing fan fiction. He wants to be 
in the thick of things. So he sets out to make himself something more, something extraordinary. My favorite, favorite, favorite thing about this, like I genuinely laughed out loud several times. Every chapter, there was at least one situation where I laughed out loud. Maybe there was a couple at the end where I wasn't because like it gets intense. First of all, this is a queer love story, which 10 out of 10, but also Nick, this sweet cinnamon roll of a boy is so relatable to me. He struggles with ADHD and just the the way he talks and the way he thinks and the way he acts, it was like reading about myself. I've never seen ADHD rep done this well and it was so cool to see. This is definitely gonna be like a reread every year type thing. Need to finish the series like the rest of these because apparently I've just fallen off the wagon with reading series. I wanna throw this book at everybody, but like in a gentle, loving kind of way, which is read the book. Now this one, I don't know how I was supposed to choose between these books. Also, Jade War should not be there. I have not read it yet. That should be on my TBR. Between Jade City, The Lies of Loch Lamora, and Rune of Kings, how am I supposed to choose? I ended up going with Jade City by Fonda Lee. So this follows the Call family, who are one of two of the crime syndicate families on this island of Kekon, where green bone warriors have been using Jade to enhance their natural abilities for centuries to fend off foreign invaders from their island. However, after the big war that happened, they are now more invested in commerce, construction, and the everyday upkeep of the, dis of the districts under their protection. Whoops. So the simmering kind of tension between the Call family and their rivals, it erupts into like open violence in the streets and it becomes a clan war. I listened to the audiobook for most of this, loved it. It was so good. The writing, so good. The world building, beautiful. I need to finish this series as well, like the rest of them, but that book, the first one, 10 out of 10. Next up, we have a Sarah J Mass shelf. And I cannot pick my favorite out of those. Not at all. The next one, also really difficult to pick from. Like I love Game of Thrones, but I'm pretty sure I recommended them like years ago. And then the other ones, like not really any standout, really, really love them. But I did really enjoy Promise of Blood by Brian McClellan. The first book in the Powder Mage trilogy. Surprise, surprise, also have not finished this trilogy. So this begins right after a bloody coup just ended. So we don't get to see all of that, but it's like the aftermath. This coup sent corrupt officials and aristocrats to the guillotines, but at the same time, it fed the poor and it kind of uplifted the lower class. But it also provoked a war with the Nine Nations and Field Marshal Thomas, I think his name is, his supposed allies are now becoming very greedy. There's a scramble for money and power from the church workers' alliances, and mercenary forces. All of that is bad enough as it is for our field marshal here, but there are whispers of gods walking among men again and omens of death and destruction everywhere. So what he thought was gonna be a big solution to all of their country's problems really just created so many more problems for everyone. The really cool thing that I liked about this is that a lot of these uh, like soldiers and whatnot, they are called powder mages. So basically they snort this powder that gives them like superhuman human abilities for a short period of time, but it's very addictive and they just need to search out more and more and they need to use more and more each time. It's not like you're just typical fantasy with only like swords and bows and arrows and stuff. It's like guns and whatnot. More like old rifles, I wanna say. I don't remember 100%, but it's not just swords and bows and stuff, which I thought was really cool. But like the tagline was what really sold me on this. It says, the age of kings is dead and I have killed it. Next up, another one that was kind of difficult because like the Silverwing trilogy, read that as a kid, loved it. The last book fucking ruined me, but I loved it. And then there's Son of the Storm. It was really good, but not like a standout. I really love this. So I'm going with Sabriel by Garth Nix, one of my childhood favorites. And I don't see people talking about this a lot. Maybe I'm just watching the wrong people. If you know somebody who stands this as much as I do, let me know. If you're one of these people, let me know. So this is one of the coolest trilogies that I've read. I know there's like, there's like a prequel, maybe a sequel that came out, but like years after it was written. Haven't read those, but the original trilogy, big fan. And my aunt got this for me when we lived with her. So I was probably like eight years old. So this follows Sabriel who lives in, in 
Celestia, how do you pronounce that? And Celestia? I have no idea. And she needs to journey into the Old Kingdom to find her dad. He's up there doing some shady shit because he is a necromancer and she needs to go find him in the land of the dead, which she can only get to from the old kingdom. I don't want to say much more about it and give anything away, but the world building, so cool. These characters, so cool. The way everything ties together in the second book and then into the third one blew my mind as a child. This might have actually been the series that really got me into fantasy from a young age. Like this kind of fantasy. So good, I need to reread this early 2022. It's gonna happen. Somebody please remind me to reread it early 2022 because I will forget. Next up, this one was an easy standout. And of course it's all the way over there, it's so far away. She is a chonky chonky boy, Priory of the Orange Tree. Look at this thing, it's as wide as my face. This is everything that I need in my life. The bigger the better with this. Like the bigger the book, the bigger the hoe. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure is how that saying doesn't go, but it's how it's how I'm saying it. Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. My only gripe with this chonker is that it's a standalone and I hate standalone fantasy, but it's big enough that it did the trick. In this world, the house of Berethnet has Berethnet Berethnet, yes, has ruled Innis for a thousand years and the current queen needs to conceive a daughter to keep the line going and protect her realm from destruction. However, assassins are coming closer and closer and closer. So in this queen's court, we have Eid, who has risen to lady-in-waiting. However, she's loyal to a hidden society of mages, not this whole queendom. Eid is tasked with keeping an eye on Sabron, the queen, and secretly protecting her with this forbidden magic. Across the dark sea from this queendom, we have Tane, I think is how you pronounce her name. She has been training to be a dragon rider her entire life. She's forced to make a choice that could unravel her entire life, all of her dreams, everything that she's worked for. While all of this is happening, the east and the west are still divided. They are refusing to parlay and forces of chaos are rising. There's dragons, that's all we need to know. Pretty sure when this came out, I saw the cover, I heard dragons, and it was an instant buy for me. I'm really, really happy that people told me about it before. There are trigger warnings for miscarriage happening. It's not like a natural thing, it's something that happens to the mother that causes a miscarriage. So forewarning before you go into this. I'm really happy that I was told because I put myself in the right mindset when it was happening. I'm really thankful to the people who told me about this because I have been blindsided before and it really, really sucks. I do wish this was a series though. This next one was really difficult to pick between all of the Lainey Taylor books because as we all know, I am a Lainey Taylor stan at this point. And where where did it go? I'm sitting on it. This is a hot mess. Strange Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. It took me a long time to pick between the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy and this one but I think I'm gonna go with this one. The dream chooses the dreamer and not the other way around. And Laszlo Strange, this orphan, has always felt that his dream has chosen him poorly. Ever since he was about five years old, he's been obsessed with this city called Weep. It's this mythical lost city and it would take someone who is much, much bolder than Laszlo to cross the world to try and search out this lost city. This perfect opportunity presents itself for him to go to find Weep in the form of a person called Godslayer and his legendary band of warriors. Laszlo has to seize this chance or lose his dream forever. My battery died mid-sentence and I don't even remember where I was. So Laszlo is searching for answers to some of his questions like what exactly happened in Weep centuries ago that cut it off from the rest of the world and what exactly did this Godslayer slay that went by the name of God, and what is this mysterious problem that he needs help solving? The answer to all of these questions lies in Weep, along with a lot more questions that come up, like who is this blue-skinned woman, and why has she been appearing in Laszlo's dreams before he's ever even met her? And if all of the gods are dead, why does she seem so real? Now, there's a line in the synopsis that says, the shadow of the past is as real as the ghosts who haunt the citadel of murdered gods. And that alone, that line alone was enough to sell me on this. Next up, we have two books to go. This one was very difficult because like, I don't want to recommend Lord of the Rings 
because like that's not a new thing. I love the Lord of the Rings. I talked about this in Couch Miss Day 4, I think it was, with the best adaptations. Maybe it was Day 3, I don't know. But the best movie adaptations. I also talked about The Hobbit and the worst movie adaptations, so that was a fun time. But for this one, I went with The Thief by Megan Whalen Turner. This is an older YA. What year was this published? 96 originally, and then 2017 again in this cover. So what the hell was this about? I don't remember what this was about, but I remember liking it. I remember like the vibes and I, re I remember enjoying it. So this follows Jen who can steal anything, at least according to the boasts that he's made in every wine shop across the city. This bragging that he's done about being able to steal anything has landed him directly into the king's prison. Chances of escape for him, not looking good, even for a man of his talents. He is invited to join a quest for an object straight out of a legend, and he is like, how can I refuse? It gets me out of this prison. So this is a story filled with like quests, with political intrigue, dangerous journeys, divine interventions. It kind of has a little bit of everything. And it's pretty short. I'm, I think I read this in one sitting. I remember being like a really good like entry level kind of fantasy where it's not too much, it's not too heavy. It's the world building isn't so intense and descriptive that it just makes it hard to get into the story, which is a problem with a lot more adult fantasy that people have a hard time getting into. It's not very accessible to non-fantasy readers, but this one does not fall into that. I remember finding this super easy to get into, which brings us to the last book. And this was one of the most difficult choices I've ever had to make. This shelf has the Lightbringer series by Brent Weeks, one of my favorite series. I haven't read the last book yet because I don't want it to end. Also one of the best audiobooks. And then we have For the Wolf by Hannah Witten, which was a recent read that I really, really enjoyed. And then we've got the Memory, Sorrow and Thorn series by Tad Williams, which blew my mind. And then The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter also blew my mind. I read it in 2020 with Aaron from Booked and Busy and Monet from Life is Monet. So, so good. So I sat there for a very long time, contemplating, questioning all of my life decisions up till this point. And I went with The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. I have not read The Fires of Vengeance yet, the next book, but I do have it. It is on my list for January. So this follows the Omehi people who have been fighting an unwinnable war for almost 200 years. This whole society was built around one thing, war. And the lucky ones in this society are born gifted. One in every 2,000 women is born with the power to control dragons. And one in every 100 men is able to transform himself into a bigger, stronger, faster killing machine. Everyone in this society is destined for this war. And young, giftless Tao knows that. And he's like, I want no part of it. I'm about to fake an injury, get out clean, get married, live a simple life away from this war. However, he does not get the chance because everyone close to him is brutally murdered and he is thrust into this life that he did not want. His grief quickly turns to anger and he is hell bent on revenge against these people who murdered his loved ones. He is determined to become the greatest swordsman that's ever lived, a man who will die a hundred thousand deaths to exact his revenge on the three who betrayed him. I remember finishing this book, closing it, and shoving my head into a pillow and screaming because he did that. It was so good. Oh, dragons, yes. This is one of those books where you cannot trust a single thing that you read. And I love that for me. I love it. I love that for Evan. I love that for everyone else who has read it. Anyways, that's the last one. I might actually scrap my entire December TBR so I can reread this and read The Fires of Vengeance. Carter is done his breakfast over there. He's very excited. I need to go get him. I wipe him up, give him like a hundred thousand kisses and then do the same with Noah. Noah's on board. That is it for these fantasy recommendations. 16 shelves, but only 14 recommendations because the two like single author shelves. Let me know down below in the comments if you've read any of these, if you've liked them, what other books you would have recommended from my shelves that I didn't recommend, or some of your own fantasy recommendations. If that's too much or you just don't have a lot of time, drop some hearts down below, preferably purple ones because that's my favorite color. As always, to stay updated with my current reads and how I'm feeling about them, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads, all at Zoe's All Booked which I will leave linked down below in the description box, along with the Patreon, with the new and improved tiers, including the book club, voting for a book on my TBR each month, voting for a video, and end screen shout outs. 
And the Discord, which in the next week or so when I can harass my brother into helping me, will be back up and running. Once again, thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. If you are in the UK or the US, definitely check this out and use the code JOLLY to get your first book for only $5. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share the video. And I hope you all have a wonderful day and get at least a little bit of uninterrupted reading time. I love you awesome nerds and I will see you in the next one.